This video is brought to you by Squarespace. From your very own online shop or your art gallery, make it with Squarespace. The last time y'all saw me, I was talking about my New Year's resolution to complete my ant project. Um, it's going well, um, so well, I didn't make a video last week because I, I couldn't stop painting. So I thought I wanna paint one with y'all today from start to finish as far as painting goes. Let's paint this, but I think, I think we need to, I think we need to get in closer. What do you say? Like really get in there. Like, like, there we go. I, wow, that is, that is quite the close shot. Here is my finger. That is, wow. And look at this view. You guys get to see like a sort of behind the scenes shot, I guess. So I don't know, hopefully this will add a interesting view for you guys to see art up close. You've already seen me create quite a few of these ant illustrations actually in the past. I used to make them for the 500 drawing prompt series. That's actually how they got started if you didn't know. And I kept including the ants into my 500 drawing prompts drawings, decided that they were becoming too often and I was kind of falling back on the ants instead of creating new illustration ideas. So I banned my ant illustrations from the 500 drawing prompts and then I started to make these ant illustration videos, but I'll be completely honest, they got boring very fast as far as videos go. And I do love my ant illustrations, obviously. They're all very different. They have different vibes, different little scenes, different details, but for a video, I, they were getting boring, which I think worked out anyway. I am creating these as a book in the future and I don't want you guys to see everything. I want there to be some new illustrations, some surprises. So it was pretty good that I stopped making these ants into videos and I'm not even gonna be posting these illustrations online until I guess after a book makes it into the world. I have been posting the line art on my Patreon page as coloring pages. A lot of people suggest that I make a coloring book for my art, but that's a a lot of more work to do and I just post them for my patrons so if you want coloring pages of the ant art you can find them on my patreon but I don't know maybe a coloring book in the future but I don't really it's not a priority for me okay so let's talk about what I'm doing here. As y'all can see, with every single ant illustration, I start off by painting the ground and then I shade the ants and then I paint the ants. The reason why I do this is because I put the shading down a little bit sloppy because I like the texture of the brush I use. So I go right over the ant's feet. And so you can see a little bit of the ground color on the ant's feet. It doesn't bother me. So by painting the ants last, I can sort of scrub away that layer because watercolor is reactivatable. So I scrub some of the shading color away and have a little bit better of a cleaner ant. And I don't know, it just, it, it gives me organization in this chaotic illustration. If I do things in a particular order, it definitely makes tackling something like this, an illustration full of detail look very overwhelming, but because I tackle it piece by piece, it makes it a lot easier. Painting the ground is very stressful. I have to work quick enough so that the paint doesn't dry as I go around all these small wine details and then as I'm painting the ground there's these branches of ground that split off around the ants here and there and it's it's really stressful but it's kind of fun you don't want watercolor to dry before you're done because it does create this I think there's a particular word for it it's like a seam where you can see a line where the paint dried and then if you paint back over it it creates another seam I don't hate it too much because it does add a nice ground texture but I would rather there to be as little of that as possible so it's definitely a race to beat the clock of drying paint this one thankfully was a lot easier because it was sectioned off to so many different little sections we have the mini golf section and then we have the grass section i did not even talk about what i drew here basically they're ants playing mini golf and it's bee themed and it's very cute. I talked shortly about this piece in my recent ant art whip tour. But anyways, uh, the ground is sectioned off. Wow, I'm going off all over the place. The ground is sectioned off. It made painting it a lot easier. Speaking of painting and easy and things that I'm doing in this video, let's thank the sponsor of this video. Wow, what a segue, huh? Squarespace is the place for artists like me and you to go to make a website, make a gallery, make a shop, sell your stuff, or just show off your art if that's all you wanna do. Why? Because I don't know how to make websites, y'all. I took a website designing course one time and it was not fun. That's why Squarespace is here. Pick one of their award-winning designed templates and you know what? If you wanna edit it, 
you can. Make adjustments, make it yours, make it unique, make it you. It's super easy and if you still have issues, they of course have 24 seven email support. If you have an issue in the middle of the night, they're there. Look, we all know you've been putting off making your own portfolio website for a very long time. Now's your chance. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Casey Golden. Why? To save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain, of course. Okay, back to what I was originally talking about. What, what was I talking about? The color choice, I'll be honest, kind of ruined this entire piece, which is such a bummer because this is an ant piece that I really liked the line art of, and I just thought it was really cute and adorable. And then I just donked it up with bad color choices. So I wanted a bright, unnatural green for the mini golf area. The green, that's gonna get confusing if I call it the technical term for golf. I'm gonna call Call it the mini golf grass. The mini golf grass, I wanted this really bright, obnoxious green color because it's fake, it's bright. So my first thought was just to water down that green for the grass so that there is obviously a very different coloring effect between the two areas. So you could easily see the mini golf green from the grass green. But then I thought, you know, I'm gonna be painting some yellow bee things later on. Maybe having a yellowy green would help separate the sections even more and also bring the yellow B pieces together as far as color goes just to bring the whole piece together. I thought I made sure that this grass color was really light so that it didn't you know all become this one green dark color but it just seemed to not be that light. And although it is easy to see the pieces apart before I color the ants, later on the piece sort of becomes very blended and hard to read. But thankfully for a book, this is something I can digitally edit in the illustration before I put it in the book. So I'm not that concerned, it is more work but at least there's a way to fix it. That being said, it had been so long since I looked at this piece that I honestly thought there was going to be concrete instead of grass around the mini golf areas. So I was like, okay, we'll have green mini golf areas and we'll have the gray concrete. So there will obviously be a division between the pieces and not everything will blend together. But sadly, I looked at the piece and there is grass texture inked into it. So womp womp. That's okay, we will, move on enough about the grass after the grass was done i shaded my ants like i mentioned earlier i really like the texture of this brush i have i added a little bit of blue to our grass colors and then loaded up my brush and started to add texture under the ants easy enough next up we were painting the ants and oh my goodness this was so hard to do. This whole video was very hard to shoot because I do have to have the lens right up to what I'm painting to get a focus shot. So I was having to crane my neck and my brush around a big fat lens and try to paint within the lines while also having light reflecting off of the wet paint, which made it hard to see if the paper was wet or dry. And oh my goodness, I would finish painting a section and then look into my camera to see if that that section was focused only to find a bunch of paper between where I was painting. There were little white spots of unpainted paper everywhere I painted when I thought I was done. It was so hard to see. The whole process of recording this was a lot, but I thought these really close up shots would be really interesting for y'all. So I, I wanted to get through it. Also, have you been enjoying all of the little pieces of like shirt fiber, clothing fiber, cat hair, nose hair? Honestly, probably cat hair, mostly just cat hair that is within the paint. There were a couple of times when I noticed there was a hair on my brush. It does happen a lot because I do have kittens, but oh my God, looking at the footage, there was almost always a hair somewhere that I was pushing around and it kind of looks disgusting. But like, if you have a cat, this is probably what's going on in your paint. So... Okay, we have our ground shade in ants painted. It is now time to start painting all of the odd structures and items and accessories and mouths and everything else in between that I need to paint. So at this point, we're almost done, but we do have these cute little golf things to color. Mostly going to be yellow. At this point, I was panicking because of the green color. So I wanted to make sure that the wood was very much different. I went with a very light brown, sort of yellowy, definitely 
is going to be going along with all the yellow objects. All of the little honey details were so much fun to draw. I just love creating these. I don't know what it is about these transparent or translucent objects like jello and jelly and liquids. I always enjoy painting them. They're just so much fun. This honey was the same, especially that dripping pool of honey. That was definitely my favorite. So I painted the honey, the windmill, beehive thing, our bee mascot handing out balloons. When it came to choosing colors for this piece in particular, I was really worried about it becoming like a vomit of colors on it. So I did want to make sure that I limited all of my detailed colors to maybe red, oranges, and yellows, warm colors, all of the orange honey, yellow bee. A lot of red details went in there from the flags, balloons, cups that some of the ants were holding. After I spent about 30 minutes searching this piece for any mouth that went unpainted, which I am absolutely sure I have missed a mouth. I always miss something. There's probably at least one ant missing a leg, which I can always fix later. That's it. I finally finished, wait, 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 thankfully last minute, I remembered one thing I wanted to do was add a little bit of extra texture to the mini golf putt putt area. So I just put some dots with a pen throughout. It isn't much, but I think it just adds a little bit of texture to the ground. So it's not just flat. And that was it. The piece is done. Wait, y'all look, I noticed if I unfocus my camera lens far back enough, you can see all of the paint splatters that accumulated on the lens as I painted this close to it. Oh boy. enjoyed this close up and personal painting video. And a huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Get yourself a website, a shop, a gallery, and a huge thank you to you guys for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.